Hey guys, my name is Gloria and welcome back to my channel. I deleted the original intro for this that I recorded a couple of weeks ago for this reading vlog. Uh, so I currently know more than the idiot who you're going to see in a few minutes. I wanted to read through some of the books that I've received in the Porgo Magic Books subscription box that I've been kind of saving up for the last few months. So I thought I'd do a little reading vlog of three of those books. Uh, I picked these books out of the lot that I have purely for aesthetics. So they all have fantastic covers. They're all real pretty, real cool looking. So the first one that uh, I'm going to read in this vlog is The Plague Stones by James Brogdon. Uh, Merge from Harpies in the Trees has been recommending this for a very long time and I can now see why. The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. And the next one is Wake. This is Wake by Elizabeth Knox. So I hope you uh, like this little vlog. Hey, so time has passed and I am yet to actually start uh, the Plague Stones yet. I decided on Sunday to watch a movie uh, during the day and uh, it was a it was a mistake and then I had some other things to do and I actually wrote a story and once my boyfriend proofreads it for me I'm gonna send it into a magazine so I'm quite proud of that but I was so mad so mad about this movie that I watched that I just couldn't really do anything else and didn't feel like that reading completely forgot I was supposed to be filming a vlog. And I'm just going to do a little rant about it here. If you want to skip the movie bit and get onto the books, I'll leave a time, whatever. The movie is called Deadly Illusions on Netflix. Um, it's got someone from it's got the, the, the nice little preppy one from uh, Sex and City. Her husband in it is quite famous too, but I can't remember what he's in. Might have been Sex and the City as well possibly friends. Anyway, it is a sort of a thriller about this woman who is a writer and she has to write her next book in the series so she needs to get a nanny and she gets this nanny, something's off about the nanny, weird goings on, is she going crazy, is she doing things herself, is the nanny, we'll never know. Fine, it reminded me a lot of a VHS tape that we had when I was a kid don't know why I was watching this. I, it was called The Hand That Rocks the Cradle and I'm still freaked out by that movie. That was basically the same thing. Woman gets a nanny. Nanny is freaking weird. I think the nanny's trying to steal her husband and become the woman and trying to kill her or something. There's a weird thing about the baby not eating and then it turns out the nanny's actually breastfeeding the baby which is just all kinds of ick. Anyway, I expected it to be like that. I expected the children to be in danger. I expected just, you know, a fun thriller romp. Uh, I can definitely enjoy like trash movies, made for TV movies. You know, it doesn't all have to be pristine, but it can be enjoyable. I was also talking to Niles Geek about this and it turns out we have very different ideas about movies. Uh, I think he also made a video about why he liked the new Wonder Woman movie and I haven't watched it but that movie was just terrible. Just terrible. Uh, he liked this movie so I think we can just uh, go our separate ways on movie terms. But this movie was the biggest load of garbage. It was the laziest thing I've ever seen. There were unforgivable Unforgivable uh, continuity errors. Um, multiple times, like four times in the movie, instead of people having a conversation or having a conflict or an argument, they would begin the argument and then the audio would just like fade out, which is like the laziest shit I've ever seen. That's like the worst writing. You have weird ass things happening. This woman has. Never had any lesbian leanings in her life, but she starts becoming attracted to this very childlike nanny, much younger than her, and after staring down her top for a while, decides to take her bra shopping. Huh? What? Who was looking after your kids, by the way, when you were doing that? You weren't you weren't doing it, the nanny wasn't doing it, your husband was fucked off. Anyway, don't take don't take 
women bra shopping, that's weird. They'd only known each other for like two days by then. Uh, never asked what her second name is, never got any credentials, even though the whole time she was like, oh no, I'll never use nanny. I'm, I love my kids, I've, I want to protect them. Get lost. There was an unforgivable um, continuity error where the mother, the wife, whatever, is writing a book so the dad and the nanny take the kids to school and then they go and get lunch. Fine. Another annoying American thing is they get like cocktails at this lunch even though he's driving that like, just stop drinking and driving Americans. What are you at? But they end up, it then switches to something else and then it switches back to them driving home and it's dark. They drop the kids off at school in the morning. But now it's pitch black. Were they having lunch for nine hours straight? Like what? Where Where are the kids who picked the kids up from school? Because it wasn't the woman because she's back writing and then it cuts back to her writing and it's daytime again. Have you been out of there for three days? What is going on? Anyway, yes, uh, there's also uh, poisoning. The nanny is poisoning her and she's having dreams or hallucinations and they are hallucinations. They're not actually happening from as far as I can tell from watching the whole movie. Yet, the nanny does know what's happening in these hallucinations and she does things in real life to make her think that they're real. Like she sees a hallucination of her smoking her cigar and when she wakes up from this thing, the cigar is actually smoked. And you see a shot of the nanny going in while she's sleeping and lighting it up to make it look like it was smoked. How did she know what she was dreaming about? What? What? Bizarre. Um, my uh, European GDPR heart was broken when she, the mother went to the library and the librarian was just like, oh, oh, your nanny, your person got out a, a book? Well, let me just turn my entire computer screen around to you and give you the names and the addresses of everyone who has ever taken out that book and you can now just go to their house and do whatever the fuck you want with that information, huh? Yeah, it was terrible. The children were never in danger. You never, um, you never saw the children. Hardly ever. I couldn't tell you what those kids looked like. At the very end, when there's like this big showdown scene happening, you just get a glimpse of them like on screens and then they try to go out but the door's locked and you're like, alright, kids are in there, fine. The, um, the nanny, a uh, tiny little slim uh, girl, does have a fight with the husband at the very end. He's quite a big, he looked quite a big guy, he looked quite muscular, even just on body weight alone, a punch from him would knock her the fuck out. Um, he does get a hold of her arm, but he seems to just help her stab him. So that was, that was embarrassing. Um, then there's like a, a golem scene. That's the only way I can describe it, where this nanny has an argument with herself out loud. Huh? The uh, the final girl run at the end. Oh, wow. You're really giving all the bad 80s movies a run for their money. She, she sort of tiptoes into the kitchen, stops and turns around. The nanny's like two feet away from her with a massive kitchen knife. Uh, she throws like basically a cardboard bowl at her and then she tries to get in the fridge. She try she opens the door and tries to get in the fridge, cuts to something else, cuts back, knife's gone, they just end up holding each other's shoulders and screaming at each other and apparently that's a fight. Um, everyone's raging about the ending because they don't understand it and I, it's stupid. That's all you need to know about the ending. It's fucking stupid. The whole thing is garbage. It's not like, how much money did they spend on this? They got these two big stars. Like, also, the fact that she's a writer never really comes into it. She writes the entire novel by hand on loose leaf A4 pages. And I'm talking first draft and second draft in like three weeks. If I wasn't trying to invent an entire novel in my head and I just picked up a novel 
If I just if I wanted to transcribe this by hand on loose sheets of paper, it would take me like half a year. Like, never mind actually coming up with shit and thinking about it. And she's always cooking dinner anyway and doing all this other shit. She's always going to the gym. Oh my god, her friend at the gym. They're just casually talking about like with the nanny you know I might see where it goes and I'm just gonna there's eight other women in this gym I'm just gonna talk about it so lightly I'm not even bothered you know I'm not even whatever happens <sighs> so anyway that was two hours of my life that I'm never getting back and then I saw on Twitter uh, a sort of secondary actor in the movie uh, was replying to someone and said Oh, I think there's going to be uh, deadly illusions too. Don't. Don't do that. Don't. Please don't do that. Please don't ever do that. Okay, so it is almost 2am on the 31st of March. Uh, it has been almost a week since I started reading, uh, started filming this vlog, but I have just gotten to almost the exact halfway point of The Plague Stones by James Brogdon and I have to say that so far I am absolutely hooked. His writing's really good, it's really really easy going, really, really fun, his descriptions are great and creepy. I love the characters, I love the little family. The book is about basically uh, this family, mother and father and their 13 year old son, find out that she has uh, a rich aunt who has this little stone cottage and she is a trustee in this village and they are asked and are, are given uh, this little cottage. Uh, they get to live there for free pretty much but they have to take care of it because it's a historical heritage site and uh, they're all intertwined with this midi, this village trust that is all very hush hush, very very we take care of our own and you know any issues whatsoever we'll sort it out for you kind of thing. So they have to move from the city to this tiny little village and take care of this house but there's uh, something weird and haunted and uh, a lot of gross rats about as well. But I really like the family, I really like the family dynamics, they are very very fun and real family. They've each got their own issues, their own shit to deal with, their own tragedies to deal with, their own pains, but they're they're a great little family who get on really well and uh I am really into it at the minute. Uh they're not there there's also not like one person sees a ghost and the rest all think they're crazy. They're all kind of getting into it at the same time. Um so it's interesting it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out with all of them kind of having all the same information at the same time. But, uh, very interesting, does deal with the plague, um, like the actual plague from uh, medieval times and how horrific that was and it's only now during these times that um, we're getting a glimpse of about 1% of what that was like. It's quite pertinent to the times we are in. so. I am going to get this finished hopefully tomorrow and moved on to the next book. Uh, I will be doing a giveaway in a couple of days that I'm very excited about and I have almost everything I need for them and it's going to be my biggest giveaway yet so it's going to be fun but I'm going to go take off this weird electric makeup and uh, finish the blanket zone.
Okay, it is Sunday. Easter Sunday, so happy Easter uh, to anyone who got a little bit close there, sorry. To anyone who uh, celebrates Easter. I'm filmed in a couple of days because my new camera is French and uh, it has a two-pronged plug instead of a, a three-plug that we use. I had to order it from France because we can't order anything from the UK anymore because of Brexit. Luckily my housemate used to go to France a lot with his family so he had uh, a plug that I could borrow to charge it so nobody cared about that. I said it anyway. I finished The Plague Stones by James Brogdon and I really really like this book. Very pretty cover although it shouldn't have a crow on it, it should have a rat. There's no actual crows or birds really mentioned in the book. The actual story, I I loved it. Uh, I loved the premise, the plot, I loved the multiple themes, the layers, I loved the characters, how they interacted. I He got me really invested in the family and wanting them to survive all the bad things that are happening in this and their nuances and their flaws. Um, just a random little interesting thing that doesn't really impact the whole book or anything but the the mother in the family uh, used to be religious and then some things happened and she kind of lost her faith and she starts to get it back again in this book although her son and her husband are not religious and it was just there was just a subtle little bit where they're kind of try, trying to understand why she needs it and what she's doing and she very eloquently explains to her son that just because she prays and just because she believes in God doesn't mean that he has to, oh. which I wish my father had thought the same when I was younger, but I just thought it was a really sort of healthy, good uh, example to have of a family with different beliefs and whatnot. I just, I really liked everything about this book. My arm is getting tired, as you can see. Great ending that just kind of creeps you out a bit at the very very end. Absolutely would recommend. I can see why Murs mentioned it so many times on her channel now. I would be happy to read this again and I will definitely be looking up some more of James Brogdon's books as well. So my next stop is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. Again, very pretty cover. I like it a lot. I haven't read anything by this author before, but I'm looking forward to getting into this. So I'll be starting that today. Who knows when I'll finish it. I'll be back in uh, about three months, I'm sure. Yes, yeah, so it is just past 3 a.m. on Thursday the 8th of April. Uh, it's been almost two weeks in this video, I think. Um, but yeah, I finished the first book. Uh, I'm about 100 pages into The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. Uh, I'm liking it so far. Mm -hmm. Her writing is very clear and it's quite funny as well. Uh, but I'm not really... I'm, the, I'm a bit stressed out at the minute. I've recently found out that there's some scary things happening in Northern Ireland. Um, and it's not book related but I, it's, it's just crazy. I had to find out from teenagers making TikToks about it because it's not being reported on the southern uh, Irish ch like news channels is not being reported by anyone in Britain either because Britain doesn't give a shit about Northern Ireland um, but there's some violent riots going on uh, there is a lot of there's a bus that was set on fire, cars set on fire, uh, petrol bombs being thrown a lot of people in Belfast in particular are staying inside and are afraid um, to go outside um, and it's just, I've, I was, I mentioned in the last clip that I was annoyed about Brexit because I can't order anything from the UK anymore because of customs and my, my camera's French, ooh, and um, in Northern Ireland Brexit is causing riots and uh, violence and possibly restarting the troubles which is scaring the shit out of everyone in Ireland right now. Um, except for the people it should be scaring. I'm I'm from Donegal, right on the border with Derry. I would go to Derry all the time as a kid. Half my family's from Derry, half my family now still lives in Belfast. My sister lives uh, in Northern Ireland. I checked in with her. The riots aren't happening near her. Um, but Marie McWilliams, who's a bit um, 
she's from Belfast I think so I'm hoping she and hers are keeping safe um, it's just scary like the Dairy Girls TV show that was really popular on Netflix um, if you've ever if you've seen that it's really funny but it's also so accurate they they talk a lot about um, bomb scares and stuff um, when I was growing up you go to Derry all the time and there'd be there'd be bomb scares, there'd be reports of bombs being called in that were in the shopping centres and it would be an inconvenience at that time. Um, even when bombs went off um, and buildings blew up, luckily there were a few casualties but I think a lot of people don't know about the troubles about Northern Ireland, particularly particularly anyone in the UK, anyone in England, um, they're, they're never taught and they don't give a shit about learning now. They have absolutely no idea when this whole Brexit thing, when the talk started, it scared the shit out of me because the idea of bringing back the troubles and bringing back the violence that that caused um, is really scary for a lot of people. Uh, so that's stressful, that's messed up. Fuck Brexit. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's not book related. Uh, I'm just a little bit stressed out about that because it's it's very close to home, it's very close to my family and my, not even people who are related to me, but just, you know, my people, my Irish people. Um, so yeah, I don't really feel like reading right now. I don't know what I'm want to do but I will get um, the other two books finished this week um, yeah The aid or marnil phone poker agam at a phone poker echo. I am jealous. Because I do not have a mobile phone, but she has a mobile phone. Need to get a life there. Aid. And will she get me near the force? And will she get me near the force? And will she get me near the force? Are you excited yet? Hot heart, Orum. That's how Durham is right. I am thirsty. Okay, I think my last clip was um, getting stressed out about the situation in Northern Ireland. For some reason, thankfully, uh, Prince Philip dying has sort of put that on pause because the loyalists have decided not to throw any more petrol bombs as a mark of respect. Yeah, anyway. In the interim, uh, I have finished The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. I don't think I explained very well what this was before. So it is about uh, a woman named Kara, or Carrot, as her friends and uncle call her. And she has just had to leave her house because uh, her husband wants a divorce. They've pretty much just fallen out of love with each other. You do find out later that he's a cheating bastard though. But she has to... The only place she can go uh, is to her uncle's. And her uncle asked her to come because he is having trouble with his knee. He can't move around a lot and he needs to go get surgery. It just so happens that he owns a museum which they call the Wonder Museum but... Its full name is the Glory to God Museum of Natural Wonders, Curiosities and Taxidermy. But they call it the Wonder Museum and it's basically filled with terrible, probably illegal taxidermy, mermaids, uh, Bigfoot. There's also some weird religious stuff in there because her uncle is 
all kinds of uh, contradictions and whatnot. But he's a very loving and very kind person and she likes him very much. She, she starts looking after the place and he has to go and have surgery for a while so she's left there alone. And she finds or she's told by some visitors to the museum that there's a hole in the wall upstairs and she thinks, oh, somebody knocked a hole in the drywall. But when she goes to investigate, there seems to be some kind of a corridor, some kind of hidden room behind it. And she asks the guy who works next door in the coffee shop that's sort of attached. He's called Simon. She asks him to come and help her patch up the wall, but they quickly discover that the space behind the wall is far more than there should be. Um, it stretches for longer than the building should stretch, longer than the entire street should stretch. and there's something not right about it and they eventually come to a door and a bunker and find themselves outside in another world filled with willows and other doors and in the book they do mention quite a lot they they say uh, they compared a lot to the wood between the worlds from the Narnia books if anyone's read the magician's nephew the children find not the ones from that you probably know but Two other children find themselves in this wood between the worlds and there's these little pools of water and if you go into the pool of water you'll go to another world, another dimension. And this is quite similar uh, in this book but a lot more terrifying. So I did really enjoy this. Uh, it's, it's basically her and Simon going there trying to find their way back, trying to close up the place, trying to figure out how to stop what's going on. I did enjoy it. Her T. Kingfisher's writing is very clear, very, uh, she's quite witty as well. You can kind of see she's originally uh, a children's writer. And while this is definitely an adult book, I think because when you're writing for children, you do have to write quite clearly. You have to write, I don't know, there's something about it. You can kind of tell that she does write for children as well, which is absolutely fine. It's very easy to read. It's got a good pace to it. The characters of Kara and Simon, you're really invested in them. You you do really feel for the characters and get into their story and want them to get out of this mess. And the actual visuals that happen, it's quite a cosmic horror, I suppose you would say, um, because there are these fifth dimensional monsters that that aren't even in our realm. There, she keeps talking about this other world as if it's, it's just a, a skin, and these monsters are underneath it, and they can make their way through, or if they want to, and they're always they're there and they're moving, and they could peer out of your own body at any moment if they wanted to, and it's just this, the fear of not knowing what the hell you're even dealing with, what you're even supposed to be fighting and it is quite it's quite creepy and quite uh messed up some of the things that happened to some people in this book but i did really enjoy this the next book i will be reading is called wake by elizabeth knox it's set in a small community in new zealand that is struck by sudden insanity and there are 14 survivors i finished all of the books and i finished wake by elizabeth knox it turns out that this reading vlog is a hat trick. Uh, three fantastic books based on three fantastic covers. Turns out you can't add your book on the cover, just saying. This one reminded me quite a bit of a couple of Stephen King stories. I haven't read The Dome yet, but I'm assuming it is based on some people who are stuck under a big dome. That's what I'm assuming the story's about. And uh, this one is sort of similar to that. It's also similar to it reminded me a lot of The Langoliers, which is a short story of Stephen King's in his Four Past Midnight uh, story collection. The story follows these 14 survivors. You, you get pulled into it straight from the off by a helicopter going down and people are sort of drawn to this helicopter crash and we're taken into the story by Teresa who is a police officer and is called to this crash for help. But anyone who tries to leave the area at that point after everyone in this small town, this small community starts 
to go crazy, starts to attack each other, starts to attack themselves and eventually just drops dead for no reason seemingly. Anyone who tries to leave just ends up passing out. They can't get through this strange invisible barrier that's there. So these 14 survivors come together, try and figure out what's going on, try and figure out what's safe. They have to figure out what to do with all these dead bodies around, what to do with their loved ones who have died in this area and just kind of figure out how to survive and how to possibly get messages out, how they believe people on the outside could be trying to get to them, could be trying to uh, get messages to them and this mysterious stranger, this person who is the 14th survivor seemingly but who won't interact with the other 13 survivors, they're not sure if they even speak English, they'll show up sometimes to help do a small task, to help put out a fire but then they'll disappear and be off by themselves and they have something to do with what's going on but the other 13 survivors aren't quite sure how. For the most part it's it's quite psychological and it's quite to do with these people's emotions and how they're interacting and how they survive for the time that they're in there. Uh, I find it to be really interesting, really well explained, the writing was really good, the characters were really good and the flaws in the characters and their all their motivations and their decisions made sense the way that the story was told and I just really liked it. I really, really liked it. There's one character in the book that is integral to the entire story and <clears throat> they have a sort of, I mean the whole thing is sort of uh, supernatural, there's, there's something weird going on but there is one character in the book that is very much connected to this and has a strange supernatural thing going on with themselves at the same time and they were a fantastic character and a fantastic sort of spanner in the works of this group as well so I loved it, I would highly recommend it. I would also highly recommend Plague Stones by James Brogdon and The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. All these books will be going on my shelf and I would be happy to reread these again so a great, uh, a great haul for my subscription box and a great uh, reading couple of weeks as well. So I'm going to be doing another vlog uh, in a couple of weeks of the next three or four maybe from my stack of Purple Magic books. books. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you like what I'm doing you can like and subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next video.